What if your next car didn't have a steering wheel? What if your morning commute didn't start on the ground but in the sky? The lines between science fiction and reality are beginning to blur. We're standing on the edge of a transportation revolution, where roads may become optional and the sky's a new highway. Self-driving cars, flying taxis, AI co-pilots. They're not just prototypes anymore, they're real and they're coming faster than most people realize. But how close are we really, and what will it take to build a future where machines drive us and lift us where we want to go? For over a century, the automobile has shaped our world. It gave us freedom, mobility, and traffic. But now, something fundamental is changing. For the first time since the invention of the car, we're rethinking everything. Who drives, where we go, and even what a car is. Self-driving cars are learning to see, think, and make decisions faster than any human. Meanwhile, a new generation of flying vehicles lightweight, electric, and vertical is preparing to rise above the gridlock below. Together, they promise something big, a transportation ecosystem that's faster, cleaner, and radically more intelligent. So, where are we today in this revolution? What technologies are making it possible? And what still stands in the way of a world where cars fly and roads drive themselves? Right now, on real streets and real cities, self-driving cars are already on the move. Companies like Waymo and Cruise have logged millions of autonomous miles. Navigating traffic lights, unpredictable pedestrians, and chaotic intersections. These vehicles don't rely on instinct. They rely on sensors, algorithms, and relentless data. 360-degree vision, centimeter-precise GPS, and deep learning models that adapt with every ride. In some cities, your pizza or Amazon box might already arrive in a vehicle with no driver behind the wheel. Tesla's full self-driving is pushing boundaries on public roads, though still under scrutiny. Others, like Zoo and Neuro, are designing vehicles that were never meant to be driven by a human at all. And above the traffic, the electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft EPTLs. These aircraft are quiet, compact, and powered entirely by electricity. Some companies are even planning commercial operations in the next two to three years. Of course, these systems aren't perfect. There are glitches, weather limitations, legal questions, but the progress is undeniable. At the heart of this revolution, beneath the polished frames and futuristic interfaces is something deceptively simple, the battery. Today's dominant battery tech is lithium-ion. Powerful, reliable, but nearing its limits. That's why the next big leap is already underway, solid-state batteries. Solid-state cells can store more energy in less space, offering faster charging and longer lifespans. Add to that fast charging networks expanding across the globe. Some capable of adding 300 kilometers of range in under 10 minutes. But it's not just about the batteries themselves, it's about the entire power ecosystem. Imagine waking up to a city with no traffic lights. Your car isn't something you own. It's something that arrives when you need it, already knowing your destination. Autonomous fleets could offer freedom to those who've been left behind. Cleaner air, quieter streets, cities no longer built around parking lots but around people. The future isn't about faster cars, it's about reimagining freedom, how we move, where we live. For all the promise there's still friction between vision and reality because real roads are messy. Rain, snow, unpredictable lighting, conditions that confuse even the most advanced sensors and simulations can't fully prepare these systems for the chaos of the real world. Despite millions of training miles, most driverless cars still rely on remote operators to step in when things go wrong. And what happens to the millions who do drive for a living? Truckers, couriers, taxi drivers, where do they fit in a future that may no longer need them? And even with clean energy, we face hard truths, our power grids are aging, our infrastructure not yet ready for a fleet of electric cars and aircraft all demanding energy at once. Solving these problems will take more than code or carbon fiber. It'll take planning, cooperation, and trust between governments, companies, and all of us who will one day ride inside. 
because no matter how advanced the technology, it can't move forward until the rest of the world is ready to rise with it. It all sounds incredible, no steering wheels, no traffic jams, cities without noise, without smog, freedom delivered at the press of a button. But who gets to live in this future first and who gets left behind? Will self-driving and flying vehicles become tools of equality or symbols of a new kind of divide? These machines could give time back to parents, independence back to the elderly, but they also raise hard questions. Who programs the priorities? Who takes responsibility when something goes wrong? In a world where machines make more and more decisions, what becomes of the human instinct, the risk, the joy of driving? Are we prepared to give up control? to let go of the wheel, the cockpit, and trust something unseen. We are witnessing the dawn of a new era, not just in how we travel, but in how we live. For the first time since the invention of the automobile, we're not just making vehicles better. We're making them think, we're making them fly. It's the next leap in a long line of transformations from horses to engines to autonomy. Across the world, the pieces are falling into place. This won't happen overnight, it will take years, even decades, to build a world where autonomy is normal and the sky is as accessible as the sidewalk. But if progress continues by the 2030s or 2040s, our cities could look very different. The next generation may never learn to drive. They may never ask, how do I get there? The road ahead is open, and now the sky is too. If roads no longer define how we move, what if buildings no longer defined where we live? What happens when cities are 3D printed? It is a story for another episode.